I'll be reacting to Joel Rand, The Prince of Snow and Blood, Episode 4. I will be watching it from Crunchyroll's website, and I'll be starting my reaction in 1, 0, and go. Pumped up for this. Well, I wonder what this creepy bastard's gonna want, though. Oof. I just hope his plants get completely eviscerated because he just encroached on super personal ground there. I wonder if our beautiful blonde is going to interfere, though. I mean, regardless of what Yukimura said to Asahi in the previous episode, we all know deep down that her bond with the girl is just too deep for her to just be doing nothing if something were to befall upon her. And that's what I love. Stuff like that where sometimes people say that, oh no, I don't care about you in this way, but then their actions say otherwise. I just find that to be really adorable and in, at least in my opinion it makes our main girl even more endearing than she already was. Despite everyone in the series absolutely loathing her. Which, I mean, I'm not gonna blame them for that either. Considering that Kimura ain't the most um, shining example of red eating charisma, but regardless, I think that gives her own charm though. Now, in saying that, going by the opening, my guess is maybe she'll actually succeed in saving, saving Asahi because Asahi's shown off prominently in the opening. I don't think they'd kill her off unless they pull off a Madoka on us where they have a character show up a lot in the opening but then they don't actually have a major factor to play. So I guess there is that possibility that the series might be... Okay, now it's back. I mean, that just shows you that Yukimura has something called decency. And that's the thing. Something that these two bastards don't like. No, we know at least one of these two bastards don't have. Hmm. Hopefully, though, she can get the upper hand in some... Oh! This guy looks like he's ready to see some action. Huh. Huh! I don't think that's going to matter to our goal one best of why she was kidnapped, though. I mean, if he's so dead set on making her not go, then why does he, he accompany her, though? She may want... I think for her it's going to be more important to save the girl. Because if she gets revenge, it's not going to bring back her family back. But... Okay, I can see why I'd be completely conflict. Uh. When he puts it that way, I'm not going to blame him for going against Sukim. Oh! <sighs> I mean, as rough as it is to see, he makes a point. If she was going to fall like that, then yeah, it's best. Oh. Whoa. Hey, could it be her self-defense mechanisms kicking in? Because they have the same haunting glow that... Or it could be something else entirely, too. Oh, no, it has to be something else entirely different. Gee! 
Oh, this tr troublesome motherfucker! Oh. I'd say this man is doing a great job of handling his own life. At least he's not a traitorous little fucker. If you ask me. Jeez. That woman's the last one to have the right to be giving anyone lectures about life and all that, if you ask me. Sticking to me hearing that coming from that person's mouth. Aww. It's such a sh shame that she couldn't have a happy life, though. Hmm. And it's just a, such a stark contrast because she looks so optimistic, hopeful, and charismatic as a young man. It's just a shame that. Aww. It's just a shame that. Junomi ruined all that. That motherfucker. Thankfully, that is something that Sawa kept even at an older age. Because even though, yes, she does seem rough on the outside, she still has that sweetness and wanting to help save the girl. So thankfully, at least that bit of her hasn't changed. <laughs> Aww. Oh. Oh. I mean, it'd be nice if there was a means of escape, but I'm assuming Jun Nome and the traitorous bitch. And I'm not gonna use her name, cause that'd be. Talk about having the welcoming committee there. Gotta admit, the place looks fancy as hell. I mean, shit, with the lighting, you would think that Janome would be presenting a fighter or a wrestler right before they scrap against another fighter with the way they're angling this. But I love it, though. It gives it a nice bit of extravagance. Yeah, that's the thing! Ah, This bastard has all the cards on the table. The thing is, though, she doesn't have any leverage. Unfortunately. And that's what this bastard has to say. <laughs> oh man. The thing is though, as sucks as oh as shit as the situation is, he has the right to be spouting nonsense because he's got the upper hand. But can they can she really take their words for it? But simultaneously though, if she doesn't take their words for it, he's a goner, so That doesn't even seem like a way of life at all. Honestly, there's no effing way I see her getting out of this at all by herself. She really, either it's gonna take someone she knows to bail her out because... Aww. And I'm just scared about what type of monstrosity that Janome is going to do with their blood. Because this dude was already causing terror, and that was without her blood. <laughs> Wait, what? That's how it justifies it? Betraying the people that he knows? What a sack of living trash. Oh, should I say, that's how she justifies it.
Oh boy, that's gonna be rough to look at. <sighs> Bullshit that he feels guilty. If he felt guilty. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he's trying to tell himself to keep his conscience as clean as possible. If it's even possible to keep your conscience like that clean. <laughs> I mean, that's not keeping her because uh, Sahib gave consent to be with Yukimura. She even wanted to stay, so that's that is bullshit. What he's saying, he's just trying to say that to completely unnerve Yukimura. That's all. And I'm not going to blame the baiting for having effect because she's currently in a compromising position right now. <sighs> I understand. I mean, I understand keeping a brave face on, but... Hell, it feels like Ruthless Monster would even be... too much of a um, decent name for Genome and decent name title. He should be called something even worse than that. has the other family members in captivity. What? What the fuck? Oh. Yo, that is worse. That is a worse fate than death. Okay, I'm just... Oh, so she finally gained a guilty consciences. About damn time. Uh, right when I was actually starting to root for her. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm kind of curious on that, too. Oh. Oh, that's really sweet. All right, I take everything that I said about her. Everything. Well, didn't expect uh, that. But I guess it does make sense, though, because she had every way of messing with Yukimura, yet she never really took it. So I guess... That type of character change. There were the inklings for that. Oh. Thankfully, though, the blood mixture is incomplete, so it should give our girl at least a chance of win. Wait, he's gonna. Oh, I thought for a second it was gonna blow himself up or something to take down Janome with him. I was like, what? <laughs> I feel like it'd be a bit extreme there. If it won't go on that route. Hey. I might as well go for it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you know what? I never thought I'd say this, but I love Sukihito now. <laughs> oh man, he's on. She's honestly been like the subtle MVP this well. I'm pretty sure that formula is gonna have some backlash, though. I don't think everything's gonna work. Peachy found like the way Genome is pursuing it.
Yes! I always love seeing her in that form. She looks a little like an otherworldly being, too, whenever she's in that state, because aside from the flames, even like the art style looks um a bit sort of like a painting in some shots. And damn, choreography is actually pretty fucking good too. Seeing her constantly trying to get the upper hand and we get a grasp of the environment when you see her dodge. And even like how you're seeing Ikimura take some hits too during the fight, it gives the battle a nice sense of grit to it. Oh man, man, man. I feel so bad for Sakito. Fuck. Never thought I'd catch myself saying that when I reacted to the first three episodes of the series. Oh. Jeez! Alright. Hopefully that... That should buy at least enough time for the others to show up. Well, you know what? When it comes to Janome saying that, it'd be appreciated if he wasn't such a fucking prick. But we all can't have what we want. You know, at the rate it's going, she'd be lucky to even get out of this scenario alive. And now Janome looks like he's just pl I mean, it makes sense why he looks like he'd just be playing with her. He needs her alive. I call bullshit on them playing the same melody. Okay, the backup could show up at any second now. I go fucking needs it. Oh. What? Oh, now that is some ultimate bro status right there. With the deterring body condition, and he still has enough willpower to help out his sister. I gotta salute that. That is a nice, powerful, emotional moment there. Because aside from the flashback sequences that show off Yukimura's brother, it's nice to see him do something like that for his sister despite in that state. That is absolutely cool. Oh man. Jamal ain't not realizing that, but he's gonna realize he fucked with the wrong woman. <laughs> and just like the music when it goes like, in 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 it, it just sounds like oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, <laughs> this guy is not like a piece of butter! Yes! Get wrecked, bitch! Yes! Now that's how bastards taking down with style! I think what's gonna come to a moment is Asahi. That's probably what's gonna come. But regardless, even if she wasn't pursuing revenge, Janome had to die eventually because he was a sack of trash that didn't deserve to live anymore, especially with all the atrocities he did. So regardless, someone had to do that. Oh, it's nice to get to see that gentle side of Yukimura again. Aww. Because we haven't heard her talk like that in the series, except for in the flashbacks. 
Oh. Hey, at least he gets to die looking at the face of his beat up her sister again. And honestly, he did. P deserves some rest. No, she has to leave him. Oh, oh! Doesn't even get to see her. At least he gets to touch her, though. You know. No, he knows. Like his body, it's all fucked up. It's a miracle he was even able to help her out. Oh no, no, he he has to go on with his brother's wishes. He wouldn't be able to. S and Asahi too. Yeah. She has to think about the people that are alive. I mean, I know it sucks to say, but she has to think about the people that are alive, not the ones that are literally on death's door. That fucking hurt, though. Because I really... Just off the flashbacks they showed off, Ikimura's um, brother, he was... He is such a cool fucking dude. So seeing him die like that... It was heartbreaking, but at the same time, that moment was really beautiful and tender, though. Like, the writing and staff in the series, they were on point. And that's the most impressive part, because... Her brother had, like, really a small amount of screen time. If, if I had to break it down bit by bit, we only saw him in flashbacks. But those flashbacks were memorable, because we saw how much he really cared about his sister. And not just that, but what really makes her brother, like the death of her brother, really painful too. It's just the fact that they did a really good job of just hitting home how much of a sweet individual he was too. Because he really had like the bravery of wanting to die by himself. Provided his sister can make it out sound and scot-free. And the most impressive part is... He helped out Ikimaru, not even knowing that it was her sister. And so, right up to the last moments of his, um... Of his life, well, of his life, at least the bit that's left. That's the most epic part, because... He helped out his sister, well, not even knowing it was his sister. And that says a lot about Ikimaru's brother, where... He was willing... He was probably in a lot of pain because we saw his body. It, it, it was in a fucked up state. He helped out someone that he didn't even know. And he pushed himself to the limit in order to accomplish helping someone out. And that's what really made this episode really amazing. It just shows you. It truly hits home just the great person that Yukimura lost. And that's something that was really impressive about this episode. That it made me... Like the brother to this extent, and that is some phenomenal writing. And that's why I thought it was fantastic from the character standpoint. And then I love what they did with Sukihiro too. We saw his layers. We saw that with him, it wasn't so simple. He actually did decide to help out Yukimura in the end, and I was like, wow. That was one of the most impressive bits in the episode too. I didn't think I would ever love him as much as I, as I no, I love her as much as I did, but I did. That's imp that's an impressive feat because all things considered, I was talking so much smack. But can y'all blame me though? I mean, she was just like honestly, she was like a bit mean from for, from the first impression. So forgive me if I wasn't gonna like have the highest amount of. Opinion on her. But regardless though, what the episode accomplished was great from a character standpoint. Because it made me love characters a lot more than I already did. Naturally, it made me love Ikimura more. And then aside from the fantastic script, the animation quality was beautiful. 
The animators, they've provided top-of-the-line animation. It did not disappoint a single bit. If anything, the animation quality, it succeeded my expectations, and then some. So from a visual standpoint, it was phenomenal. Artwork was beautiful, like literally whenever our main girl is fighting, it looked like I was looking at a painting. That's how gorgeous it looked. And then aside from that, uh, the vocal performances in the episode were just absolutely amazing. Especially the voice performances from Yukimura. Just so phenomenal. Like even the younger ones here. It was just amazing. The music was beautiful. It sounded like butter to my ears. And that's why it, I have to rate this episode a 10 out of 10. And, be, and not just that, it made a lot of plot progression because we finally see Chico like die. I'm like, go and fuck him. I'm glad he's get killed. And that's why I love the episode. Just so much progress. Our girl gets a revenge. And it's just a captivating episode from start to finish. And the action was amazing, too. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot to mention the action. It was well done. But it's just, there was so much, like, the script was so amazing. I just had a... Talk about that more than the visual quality. And that's why I thought this episode was a classic in my opinion. But anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on the episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the bit, share it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you.